And then I have a charge to Pastor Howell. Would you come on up here, Pastor Howell? It's interesting. I use yellow pads of paper on which to write my outlines. I'm super high tech. This is an iPad Evernote system uh, application in there with all my handwritten notes. And as I came to this part preparing for this evening, I wrote the last line to the church on the last possible piece of the last page of a pad of paper. And I took a new pad and I called and pulled out a new page. Now, I don't have any doubt, Pastor How Come stand over here. You maybe stand next to you. <laughs> I don't have any doubt that you'll do all these things. I wouldn't have recommended the church call you, but as my final, if I, if I did, uh, that I, as my final reminder, I would like to charge you, number one, to stay sweet. You're a warm, kind, loving person. You have a heart for God and a heart for His people. A lot of irritations come in the ministry. A lot of people kind of bother you, and it's easy to let those things build up and lose your sweetness. Interesting to me that only one negative command is given to the husband. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Don't store up those wrongs. I attended pastor school in March of 1975 before I came here as a pastor in May and heard Dr. Hiles say, the first thing you need to do when you go home is to love your people. I didn't tell anybody I loved them except my wife. Those days, we didn't do it. I didn't tell my mother I loved her. didn't tell my dad I loved him. Surely didn't tell my friends in college that I loved them. It was really awkward. But I read this book, and it had it in there that you're supposed to love people. The first sermon I preached as pastor of the First Baptist Church of Bridgeport was on love. One of the things that has made this unusual as a church ministry and special and different from many other places is the spirit of warmth and love and acceptance. Make sure that you continue to foster that. And then stay strong. It's interesting. God told Joshua, only be strong. Moses told Joshua, only be strong. And the people told Joshua, only be strong. You know, there's enough snowflakes out there. There's no place in the work of God for weak-willed, people-pleasing, trend-following, popularity-seeking leaders. Be strong. Be strong in the Scripture. I've heard Pastor Howell explain his reasons for using the King James Bible, and he's said publicly, if anything, he's stronger on that issue than I am. Be strong in your stand. People are always going to try to move you a little bit. Be strong and diligent in your service. And then... The last part of my charge to you is this, stay after souls. First Baptist Church of Bridgeport was built on soul winning. And when we had not been here very long, we were getting ready to start the school, I got a call from Brother Bill Swain. I knew that he was a student at a, a theological seminary in Grand Rapids, and I was sure since he'd had some family members get saved and come here, that he was going to criticize some of my preaching. And uh, he instead wanted to come work and help us start the school. And for 28 years, he served as our principal. But that wasn't the most impressive thing about an excellent principal, tremendous in his administration and understanding of academics. He was always out after people. He helped start many of our bus routes. The afternoon Sunday schools were his idea. Always had somebody who's winning to Christ and discipling. First Baptist Church built on soul winning. God, let me have five people down the aisle the first Sunday that I was the pastor here. Let me lead last week seven people to Christ in my personal soul winning. And I say to the church and to the new pastor, be sure you're after souls. Westminster Abbey was founded in about 10, 960 actually was founded. They built the current building in the 1500s. It is a place of <clears throat> amazing intricate, beautiful, exquisite architecture. Seventeen kings have been coronated at Westminster Abbey, and many have been married there, many of the royal family. And over 3,300 of the elite of England have been buried there. A lady, an older lady, was part of a tour group. The leader was telling the people all the wonderful things about the building when it was built how big it was 225 foot tower all the amazing architecture 
And this old lady asked a question. She said, has anybody been saved here recently? Nobody knew how to answer that. Pastor Al, you've kindly said I can continue to get the emails about the hospital calls so I can see who's in the hospital. Make sure my name's not on the list. And you said I can continue to receive the email about push pay that tells about our online giving and that it's all right to have somebody send me a copy of the bulletin so I can see how we're doing in our attendance and our offerings and the souls and the baptisms. But, you know, the main question I'm going to ask when I come back is, has anybody been saved here recently? So stay sweet, stay strong, stay after souls. Doreen and Johnny and James and Danny, I'd like you to come up here for a moment. Would you do that? Chrissy, would you come? No. That's coming. It's just a little early. Well, here's, here's the first gift. I get to travel around the country, and I tell preacher's kids every place that they're special. And when this service is done, you'll be the preacher's kids at First Baptist Church of Bridgeport. And you're very special. You're great kids. You've got a good heart. You love your parents, and you love the Lord, and you have a good attitude. And Johnny, there's a $50 bill in there, and I want you to know that it's not for your mother, it's not for your father, it's not for clothes. It's for bubble gum, <laughs> gummy bears, toys, the dollar store. James, there's a $50 bill just for you. And Danny, there's a $50 bill just for you because preacher's kids are special, all right? So we love you, and you're going to be great, great preacher's kids. something special for Pastor J.D. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> I have something special for Pastor J.D., and I told him that this would probably be his favorite present ever, so here it is. He may not know the significance. Oh, really? These are practice ping pong balls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Can you tell them why? Shall I tell them why they're practice yeah. ping pong balls? Oh, there's no time. <laughs> Just only a few weeks ago when they invited us over to their house, I was in my Sunday dress. And he, it was, it was a Sunday. And the comment came up about playing ping pong. And I said, oh, I don't know if I can dress like I am. Okay, we will, because I thought actually it would be a good excuse if I lost, you know, that I, I didn't have more of a, a flowing outfit on. But I didn't lose, so, um, <laughs> so enough said, I got him several colored practice ping pong balls. <laughs> Pastor Howell, I have a couple extra gifts. I've been planning three of these for a long time, but in cleaning out my office, your new office, I came across a gift I've been given by Rodney Rupel, and I won't have any use for it anymore because it says, Ashes of Problem Employees. <laughs> this is not only a great place to hide the evidence, it is a tremendous incentive to others do right. So beware, staff, you'll have that. And then as the pastor, people are going to ask you for all kinds of stuff. People want you to change the services. Uh, people want you to change the standards. Staff members may think they need more help, more money, different location. And it's hard to know what to do, but I've been given something some years ago that has an almost mystical ability to come up with the right answer in every situation. It's this little button. You just push it. So that, that will, uh, 
That will be a kind of a Ouija board to help keep you on track. And then I have three more serious gifts. I know that you love flashlights, and I did some shopping and found the most bright flashlight I could find. It uses 12 AA batteries. It is 4,000 lumens. It shines from here to Clio. Yeah, there are people putting sunglasses on. So I want you to have this and remember that it's your job as pastor to shine the light of the world in our community and around the world. And then have a Bible that I preached from when I was your age. And I preached all the time from this Bible. It's a Ryrie study Bible. It's not a nice, beautiful new Bible like the one you gave me. But I hope that God will bless your preaching and that you will love preaching his word and serving his people as much as I have and that God will bless you and use you in that endeavor. And so that you've got the light of the world, you have the word of God. And then the Bible says that we should be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the work of the preacher is to prepare and preach the word of God. And I didn't know what you were going to do for me, but I really like the special edition JFK Mount Blanc. And so the, my wife and I purchased this for you. It's probably not as pretty, but it's a very nice fountain pen. Now, here's another part of the story. Brother Bohal likes fountain pens. And I had one that I wasn't using, a nice Mont Blanc fountain pen, so I gave it to him. And he cherished it for a few months. <laughs> and it was either lost or stolen. So if you see this pen anywhere, this is Pastor Howell's pen, all right? So thank you, Brother Howell. We love you. Excited God's going to use you. Look forward to seeing God do great things in your life. Thank you. love you, man. So much. Thank you. You guys can go down and stay here. I would like for the deacons and male staff members and any of our staff evangelists, Brother Bowman and Brother Flanders are here to join me on the platform. I've never been ordained as I saw people practice ordination. It didn't seem too close to what they did in the Bible. But the word ordain is in the Bible. It says to ordain elders in every city. And the idea is that you set them in place and a church recognizes the will and the call of God on an individual. And that is what we're doing in this moment is we're going to pray. I will pray aloud and lead us. If you gentlemen want to pray silently or pray aloud, you can as well. And we are saying that we voted as a church that this is to be our pastor going forward. And we're now asking God to anoint you with his power, to give you wisdom, to bless you, and to give you the opportunity for many, many years to lead this great congregation forward in the work of the Lord Jesus. So get around, fellas, if you all can, try to put a hand on them, as many as you can. And uh, Pastor Howe, we'll pray for you here. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful that your hand has been upon this place for so many years. Lord, you've protected us, you've blessed us, you've strengthened us. You've given us the great privilege of seeing hundreds of people go out into your harvest field. And now you've given us a wonderfully smooth transition. Thank you for the people who've been so faithful, so cooperative, and worked so well in these days of change. And Lord, thank you for leading us to call Pastor Howe and for the fact that we simply recognize your call on his life to be our pastor. Would you give him wisdom to make right decisions and strength to withstand temptation? And God, give him grace to be able to help those who will have so many difficulties, so many trials, and so many troubles. God, give him power to win souls, and may there be a great harvest of souls in the days ahead. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would, in a wonderful way, help this church to go forward, to continue. And Lord, I pray that the greatest days of First Baptist Church of Bridgeport would be those days that are yet ahead of us. Use Pastor Howe in a tremendous way. May we be faithful members and follow his leadership. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name for all that you do. Amen.